That is not good at all. In the last video, I discovered that I was going to have to put a lot more work into this old drill press than I expected. In this video, we'll take everything apart and work on what I think is the toughest part of this restoration, and that is the table. Uh, so this little pin that's here almost looks like it has threads on it. Well, I don't have a lot of options other than just to very gently grip it. A pair of old pliers. I'm pretty sure this has threads on it. Just a tiny, tiny amount of movement in the top bearing and none in the bottom bearing. So these are lubricated by the oil uh, flap up at the top and that's it. Completely open so the oil must flow in there. Just have to make sure you keep on oiling it. There are the splines. They interact with the shaft. They look in a good shape as well.
I have as much of the paint removed as I can get off. So now it's time to start thinking about how I'm going to weld this up for the repair. And um, on the base, you can see there are a few holes that were drilled in here. Uh, I may or may not paint this surface. I'm not 100% sure what I want to do with that. So I'm going to weld this up. A few things I think are going to work to my advantage, at least I hope. Um, these being holes, I don't think there's a defined point at which they can crack. Uh, there's only a few of them as well that go all the way through. So there's what looks like three maybe that go all the way through and the rest of them do not. So I've taken the time to clean this out as carefully as I can to get any sort of remnants of grease, dirt, dust, whatever that's in there out of these holes. So I have this as prepped as I can for a good uh, welding job. This is what I have. I have the eighth inch nickel 55 welding rod. And I'm going to go ahead and try and use the barbecue. I think that's going to work the best for this uh, fairly big table to fit into the barbecue. And if there's any paint remnants or whatever, it's not going to stick out of the house.
So I'm pretty happy with the performance of these nickel 55 welding rods. Uh, the setting that I had for my welder was 105 for the amperage and it's a Lincoln 225 arc welder. And that seemed to work fairly well. It didn't seem to have a lot of issues with spattering and I know these welding rods don't lay down like any other welding rod does. So I'm making some progress. Uh, I blew through this uh, pretty bad so obviously way overheated dropped that big ember really it was a metal uh, molten metal slug out of the bottom the reason that I'm uh, using the hammer to kind of peen this over is to expand the weld joint a little bit to make sure that it is uh, as it cools that it spreads out a little bit more that's kind of a, a known technique when uh, welding cast iron all right I shall continue All right, I'm making slow progress. I'm getting to the, the worst one, which is the hole that goes all the way through. So I'm just gonna build that up from the bottom, from the rib. So there's a rib inside there and see if I can uh, patch that in. So it's not gonna look great from the bottom. It's probably better ways to do this. This is what I'm gonna do. All right, guys, it is completely welded up. I think I filled all the voids, but we'll see. I have to remove this, some of this material. I'm gonna be careful when I remove it too, but first step is that I have to make sure that this cools down evenly. I'm using a flap disc on the angle grinder to take those welds down and I'm being careful not to go too far to gouge the surface surrounding the weld. I'll follow up with the file to bring the welds down closer again to the surface and then I'll complete the top by hand scraping which is a finish that I really like, though in this case it doesn't really serve any real purpose other than looks. Pretty happy with how that turned out. There are a few areas that I just um, I missed. So if I get enough confidence up, I may go back and uh, do those. And I was thinking this went fairly well, so I think I may do the base in the exact same way. There's only a few holes in that one, and none of them go all the way through. With the welding out of the way. Next up, we'll be dealing with the mound of sawdust in the shape of a motor, but we're gonna have to leave that one for the next video. So thank you for watching. Thanks to all my subscribers and my patrons as well. 
Take care, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.